We're going to get started here in a second, guys. Just bear with me. We'll be here for about an hour with FOMC, so I don't really expect too much to be, you know, really going on today. I'll give a few examples, of course, some stuff, but today should not be the, the craziest day, in my opinion. I'd imagine it's, it's pretty kind of calm until um, FOMC begins. We'll, we will be live too on our second channel. Uh, but yeah, so. Until then, a few names that look good. Tesla's like one of those names that looks really good though. Tesla's like a beast. Like, seriously. Straight up monster right now. But so far, you're seeing buyers kind of show up on the day in comparison to, you know, yesterday, of course. You kind of look at the price action that we have here, too. You know, still sitting above 41.38 here on ES has been the kind of line of the sand. You saw this break up, mount, you know, continue to push up. This is what you want to see. So going into FOMC, you look good. But of course, you know, it's all going to come down to the tone from Pal. It's all it's going to come down to coming into today. If you have questions, go ahead and post and we'll be here for about an hour. Um, but yep, so make sure you take advantage of the time we have because I will not be staying here longer. Um, but yep, for sure. Let's go ahead and get started. I don't know why it keeps taking this off too. If you guys have any stocks for me to go over, let me know as well. Um, but again, you know, not too many things that are getting crazy on here. I'll pull up Tesla. Tesla is something I'm definitely interested in today. I think definitely going to be a name out there that has a lot of potential. What's going on, Doc? Sorry. Yeah, both 164, you look good on Tesla. Really, you're, you're looking for 166 on Tessie. But, I mean, going in, NQ looks really good. You're you're going to get the 0.25 hike, though. I remember, man, it's coming. 100% 0.25. It, it is on the board right now. <clears throat> Let's go on, Junior. That's cool. I did not know it brings us back up. That's pretty cool. So, um, someone asked me last week to test out one of the futures or one of the um, one of the add-ons for Bookmap. So, I probably one of my new favorite uh, add-ons. I, I like I like icebergs, obviously. A lot of everyone knows that, but um, Market Pulse, really big fan of this so far. So, like giving like a visual of something that it does. So, we use on Tesla, for example. Um, obviously, everything we do that comes back down to volume and overall pressure coming in. So volume pressure, turn it on, um, create Tesla volume pressure. You could play and it'll pop up. Um, now, you can move this all over your monitor, which is another thing I like. So I don't really like keeping it on my main screen. Sometimes I will, but I usually like throw it over to work my broker screen. And I just move it somewhere. <clears throat> but I don't know if you can really, I'll put like right above my head so you can see, maybe it's like a little bit easier to see. I'm trying to see like where's the best place for it. Yeah, like you can like see like right there basically. But I do like this. I'm gonna def and it, and it gives you a sound alert as well, so you can actually hear it when it's coming in as well. So like, let me turn it on real quick so you can hear that a little bit better. So it is turned on, um, but it only really shows up. You can only hear it uh, when there's like, Im immediate pressure coming in. I don't know why that's the noise coming out of it. It's usually like a, you can hear that, but I hate that noise. Not a fan of that noise. <laughs> uh, it was a different noise. It was like a little popping noise. I, had, I think you could change the setting on it, but definitely a cool thing going on there. Um, and gives you a hint of when, you know, buying is coming in more pressure. And you, as you can see here too, over those, you know, those few seconds, you can see increased buying definitely happening here on Tesla for a second. But again, you don't expect anything crazy. It's not going to be a, it's not going to be the best thing to use going into FOMC. Uh, again, you're gonna need a lot of misdirection and stuff like that. So again, kind of knowing what to look for, what not to look for. Um, but 
definitely really cool because it overlays over everything, which again, I'm a big fan of. So again, if you have more things y'all want me to look at, I will look at those and add the different uh, add-ons and just test them out and give you my opinion on them. But even here, you look really good still. You had a level up here earlier this morning on ES 4155. You had about like 700 lots sitting here earlier and then obviously it took them off the book. Um, you get kind of pushed back down from there. So it's just like kind of a little, little bit of a range bound, nothing crazy really going on here. Um, if anything, it's more of like a more relaxed FOMC date that I've seen so far. Um, coming in though to FOMC, big things you're looking for. You definitely want to see the tone from Powell. You want to see, you know, what is what is his opinion on specifically core inflation? Does he see that it's moving in a specific direction? You want that's big big question mark there. And then on top of that, you want to see, you know, ultimately are they leaning more towards a pause and on those uh, on those lines? I'll have it all live on my main channel. Um, so yeah uh cultural palace which what jerome powell is likely to say today in my opinion he will likely comment on the strength of the regional banks and the fed stops and the fed backstops deposits he will likely hint to the fact the fed will pause after his rate hike i i think it's that that's kind of like the tone that i think he's going to take um I, I think he's going to highlight that banks still have there's still plenty of money that's sitting out there uh, in preparation for this um, that's my opinion on it though. Um, so, but yeah, he'll luckily defer Congress for the debt ceiling resolution. He's not going to really say anything about the debt ceiling. He'll say like, they're, like he, he says the same thing every time, you know, I, I don't think he's going to come into the debt ceiling and say, guys, you know, if we, if, you know, put in hypotheticals of we're going to crash and this and that, if we don't raise the debt ceiling, he's just going to say, there's only one thing they can do and it's raise the debt ceiling. You know, he's not going to get involved in that. He's not going to get in the middle of that. He doesn't want to get in the middle of that, especially right now while uh, Powell or sorry, Biden is, you know, about to, you know, promote a new, a new governor of the Fed, things like that. Um, that's basically going to be working hand in hand with him. Like, why would he want to get in the middle of that? You know what I mean? That would make no sense. So um, from his standpoint, I think Powell's going to be pretty passive on that subject. If anything, side with Democrats saying, you know, we need to raise it at all costs, which I, I think you have to raise it. Like, no matter what, you have to raise it. Um, and, you know, Biden is the president, so he doesn't really have to negotiate. So it, it is what it is. <clears throat> so market already kind of knows about the recession. I would argue that, you know, you know, the, the idea that market knows about the recession, I'm just saying, like, from a from a stock market standpoint, I I don't know what else this would be considered, you know, dropping from you know seventeen thousand down to you know ten thousand basically, you know at least six thousand points of downside on the Nasdaq, and then on the ES you drop from you know forty seven hundred down to you know thirty five, so twelve hundred points on the ES, you know, w what is that considered if not a recession? So you know that's a that's a big big thing to kind of realize. Again, guys, I'm not gonna be able to do too many examples today. It's like I just I don't think you're gonna get crazy movement. Um, if you watched the YouTube video yesterday, I think yesterday's video was one of the better videos that we've done lately. Um, if you guys don't already subscribe to the channel, um, this is the channel so you know. Um and yesterday's video was right here. Now I get it, like clickbait, thumbnails, it's YouTube, sorry. Um, but I Gave you a really good example of what's happening with the buying pressure on Bookmap, and yesterday was one of those crazy days of buying pressure on the icebergs coming in, so that was definitely interesting. Um, but yeah, I tried to give as many updates as possible on Bookmap, or just like giving you a visual of like things I looked at for throughout the day with Bookmap, that kind of gave me an opinion, or you know maybe got me into a trade as well. Um, if anything, based on yesterday's price action, I would have been a buyer going into today. Like, I just would have been. So. You, you still look good, but again, you, you don't want to guess too much on what Pal is going to do or, or say, right? I'm mean, going to give you like another visual too. I do want to like just point this out really quick. Like just really quick, like looking at where we're at, like on SPY, right? You're SPY, you're at a pretty, you know, influential, massive <laughs> level, right? It's, um, you know, just drawing this out. It's not a specific supplier demand. It's just giving you a visual of like, you know, this is a turning point. Last time we pushed in April 2021, May you had a dip, you came back up, you mounted, you know, going into June and you ran, you know, to 480, right? We went from, you know, 415 to 480 over the next five, six months, okay? 
Um, so it's important to realize the importance of this level. Now, it's also important to realize that we basically held below this level since, you know, May of last year. So it's almost a year underneath this 420 region, basically. You know, you had a little bit of a wick above on the weekly, and then you came crashing back down a lot. This was Jackson Hole last year. So it's important to realize where we're at. Now, Q's, and it's important that we take a look at the, you know, data charts and not just, you know, short term on bookmap as well to give you a visual and kind of what to expect today as well and the significance of today. Now, I think it's a little bit different here on Q's because like I think you can almost argue that you kind of almost had the breakout, but very similar guys. You can see the same thing, you know, going back, you know, this is more of a January. You dipped down in March, you came back up, mounted in May and you pushed up and pushed, you know, to four, what is that? 410, 408 from, you know, 319, almost a 30% run monster monster push you know we're right back there as well so like i would say across the board you're at like that line in the sand there's no reason to jump to conclusions in in either direction right now um you know even though i side right now with based on where we're at and how we've been holding up and overall just the way the market's reacting to tech that i think you look more bullish than necessarily bearish there's no reason to rush into positions and there's no reason to you know hammer calls hammer puts there's there's just no reason at all um, especially at this time, if anything, I guess, like from a technical perspective, I think you kind of like the risk to reward makes more sense on the puts because your stops to the upside are so tight. So you'd have, you know, a much tighter stop to the upside and the downside would be obviously huge. So, you know, you still, you break above this, you expect to get a retest and a push back up. That's what you would look for. You know, similar to what we had back here where you push up, retest, continue going. So you're going to have your opportunity. I, I don't think you have to rush in anything. Um, very important to realize that as well. Um, so, food for thought there. <coughs> Man, the cough, let me tell you, though, today is acting up. Again, guys, if you have any questions on things to look for today, you know, going into FOMC, um, you know, the decision will be announced at 1 p.m. So, around, what time is it right now? So it's 12.10 for me. So 50 minutes, it will be announced, the rate decision. But I don't think that's what's going to really... I mean, you'll get an initial move on the market. Don't get me wrong. But I don't think that's what's going to drive the market down or up. I think everyone is expecting a 0.25 hike right now. There, if I mean, if you got a pause, which I don't think you're going to, but if you got a pause, that'd be like the biggest surprise that there was or could be. It's going to be about the tone and what they say, you know, with this decision. The Fed statement will be also really interesting to give you a tone of before Powell gets on stage. I think like the last meeting, like when you looked at what Powell said, like it gave you a pretty big push in which direction we were going to go. You know, the, the tone was obviously we're looking for, you know, we're looking for reasons to slow down. We're, we're getting closer and closer to pausing, slowing, like, you know, they said slowing over and over and over in that last, that last call. So there was no reason to get crazy there. Hey, what do you think about the Nef about Netflix? I've seen a bear fall in 30 minutes, but it looks a little weird to me. Is it invalidated? Well, let me bring it up here on book map first. We'll let that load in. We'll go look at the chart. We'll come right back. So going into something like Netflix, as we look here, uh, the first thing, I think it's always important that we look at like higher time frames, So, so you understand where this level is coming from. Now, 331's kind of been this massive level. Like, it's 331, and I, on the weekly, it looks a little bit off. But you go to some, like, the daily. You can see 331's a pretty influential. It's, like, where that's right where that gap kind of started back here of last April, right? It's really crazy. It's been a year since, like, the big drop, right? Um, and so when we look at something like Netflix, okay, and you come in here, and we look at where we're at, you can see this is still the daily time frame, right? So we we pushed above, we got back below, we pushed back above mountain, and we're back below it now. So going to something like the two hour, I think it gives you the best visual of this three thirty one level. It's kind of been the biggest level we talked about here on Netflix. We traded into it a few days ago as well. Um, but one, two, three, four touches of three thirty one, three thirty one, and pushing down. If the Fed meeting goes well. I'd be looking for Netflix to get above 331. And from 331, I think you have a lot of upside potential. I'm going to tell you right now. Um, but playing it to the downside or playing anything to the downside right now, I just don't get the logic um, personally. Um, as you can see here, yeah, you are making some lower lows here on like the two and four hour. Um, but again, you're at such an influential time right now. I think that, you know, if we look at Qs and how they're holding up, we look at NQ specifically with the NASDAQ. Um, you're, you're holding up basically at highs right now. There's no reason. <coughs> there's no reason to be jumping to shorts, in my opinion. Um, you asked about a bear flag. Um, I don't see a bear flag here, uh, personally. Um, not being rude or mean. I just, I just don't. I mean, maybe, 
I, I, it looks extreme. Like on a five minute, that looks extremely overextended. On a fifteen minute, I don't really see it. On the one hour, I, I don't see it. So that's my opinion there. Um, but yeah, I'm just not. I, I'm a risk to reward guy, and I just don't see the reward to the downside going into the Fed meeting. It just doesn't make logical sense for me. Um, going into you know book map here too. You, as you can see though, it's like and I would expect this, right? I would expect not a lot of liquidity in either direction. They have some walls at three twenty four, like your basic every other dollar here. But I mean, even to the downside, like it may look like there's not a lot of liquidity. But again, it's just like no one's preparing to buy before the Fed meeting, right? Like no one's gonna be saying, okay, I'm going heavy. 50 minutes before, you know, the Fed meeting comes out, unless you have some crazy insider information, right? Um, so people have already established positions, established their hedges, and they're kind of like waiting now. And then you'll start to see the volatility play out after they start tweaking their position after a decision is made and after, you know, the Fed talks. So I think like just right now, I just, I would really like, I would just say like patience, your best friend, you hear me say it all the time. That's going to be your best friend right now, 100%. I'm trying to see if there's any questions. I don't see anything though in Discord. These guys are quiet in Discord. Yeah. But yeah. <clears> Hundred percent <throat> though. Tesla is like my favorite thing right now. Giving y'all like a visual too. We've been talking about it in Discord. If you get above 166 on Tesla, I believe that's a level. Um, I don't know if you've seen this on Twitter or on anything like that, but I will say. Um, it's one of the best inverse head and shoulders that I've seen um, going back into, you know, maybe NVIDIA is one of the better examples, but NVIDIA was like on a daily and weekly. <coughs> I mean, that's perfect. I mean, it's one of the best setups there is, like hands down. I mean, the only thing you're really waiting on now is a Fed meeting. Fed, that's all you're, After that, I mean, like, I think the likelihood of pushing up into 180, possibly even higher is, is definitely there. Um, but yeah, Tesla's looking primed to say the least. Like, looks fantastic. It looks absolutely juiced to the max right now. Big fan of Tesla here. <clears throat> uh. A little bit before we uh, get to the end of the live channels, start setting up the live stream for the Fed meeting and everything as well. Meta trying to break down. Um, I'm gonna bring up Meta as well. One sec, let me look up and bring it up. Meta, bring it up real quick. Um, I can show you that level. I had it marked out a few days ago. This was a level there. I'm trying to go to the daily and see. <laughs> See exactly where we were. Pretty positive. That's the range we're looking at there. Let me zoom out a little bit further too to get a better look. Yeah, around 235 as well there. But yeah, meta, like you're you are getting a little bit of a push down. I'm just really like again, when it comes to, again, I'm not going short on anything here. Like I'm just I'm not really playing anything at all, like to be honest. There's no reason. Um, but you, you, I would imagine you had some sort of news that just pushed you down, like just really quick, like a five second meta search. Like I would have to imagine, um, exactly. So within three seconds of me looking this up, typing in money sign meta, you come and get the answer you're looking for. FTC proposes new sanctions on, oh, for Facebook owner meta instantly. Um, so yeah, like I'm just saying like. That was your answer. You know what I mean? Like meta just dropped because of that. Again, like you're not going to catch. I mean, unless you caught that news like immediately, like you're not going to make any money on that right there. Like literally at 12 on the dot and then you just drop down. So cool. But yeah, I mean, you're already trying to bounce back. The, the big level here on meta too, just so you know, is around 
237. If you mount back above that, I think you look fine. You can see you dropped down instantly, retested it, but yeah, there, there's nothing too serious there. You can see here on meta, like 237 again, that's where that level is. You see a block come up there, you see some sellers trying to make a little bit of a wall. We'll see if it even holds. But yeah, I mean, I would assume you push back above this, to be honest, but yeah. Especially with, with all of the, the new, you know, all they're doing is hyping up, adding chat GPT to, you know, Facebook, you know, that's just going to be another money pit there and more data for them to get, which, you know, is their bread and butter for making money. So, um, yeah, you got to be able to differentiate between short term news and actual bad news for the company. You know, their earnings were pretty amazing. So, yeah. Yes, just chilling 4150. 4155 is a pretty big level. I'd be watching that right now. You didn't post the live on YouTube. I had to go to Twitter to get the link. Uh, this is not on my main channel. This is on Bookmap's channel. So, yeah. One second. This place, they make like pretty great actually a little bit off subject they do it's um they make like homemade tea it's like all they do is i don't know how they make money but anyways they have this mint tea it's the best and just like no calories fantastic anyways <laughs> thanks for the coffee no it's not it's it's, it's mint iced tea It was good. Anyways, so yeah, so there's there's nothing too much. I, I really I want to watch Meta here just to see if you get back above this. I would I assume you're going to. Like you're already seeing buying pressure start starting. Like this would be a great time to have market pulls here. Create one of market pulls, hit play. I'm like super curious now. Dying to know. Um no, we need to change that. Sorry. Price change. I like I like the volume pressure for me. That's one I like. But yeah, you can see right here. I don't know if you can't make it bigger, but like you can see the the pressure coming in, pushing you back up. But look, look, we'll see. Ling Ling. Let's see, we'll see. It's just really nice to have this like just sitting somewhere, so you can just see. And then if you like the noise, you can leave it up. I don't like leaving it up when I'm in a live and hearing like an annoying like buzzing sound. The ticking noise, I actually like. I did like the ticking noise, but yeah. <laughs> student of the game she doesn't want to be exposed to the internet you guys are a bunch of animals tesla pushing up dude tesla looks so good like you just can't you just can't go long at fmc on tesla like you can't it's like you're just taking such a huge risk how much does book map cost um honestly the full price of it i'm pretty sure it's around like a hundred 20 for for everything so you can use it on stocks um but i would i mean the link is down below so you can check it out i think yeah the link for everything is um actually they don't even have the link on there uh, on my youtube page you can click it so you get my discount um that is crazy they do not have the i kind of can't believe that so if you go to my YouTube page, go to whatever video, it doesn't matter. Uh, scroll down the book map. It should automatically uh, do the, the code for you. So you can see, it'll bring it up. But you gotta get the global plus, I believe, for options. Yeah, like 90% sure. So futures, equities. I mean, honestly, I think futures are what you really need it for. You wouldn't really have to get on equities because obviously we just trade things to that direction. But yeah. Yeah, it's about 120. Yep. And the reason why is because you're paying for the data. Like that's that's the that's the real thing. You can do it on something like um you can do it on something like TOS where you use TOS's data 
Um, it's going to be a little bit different, but obviously it's like $50, so it's much cheaper, you know? So, like, it's up to you at the end of the day. Um, TOS is probably, like, where I would say people, like, get their feet wet, try that out first, and then, like, move on to the next. Yeah, look at that meta breaking right through. See, that's all I was saying. Like, not looking for that. Um, Jay Ryan. Oh, QCOM. QCOM does look good, Jay. What do the white lines mean, Taylor? Uh, so this, all this is, is the, uh, this is the, what's it called? The, what's this? Uh, Market Pulse. Um, so this is on Meta. So Meta is pretty, when it leans more into the green, I think it has to get above 60%, I believe. Let me go look on like on Tesla. So like Tesla, you're at 28%, you get here to 98%. So whenever you get above, I think it might be 70. Let me, I want to make sure, like where's the, just where it's at. It, sh it shows you the percent of buyer versus sellers. So when you get over the amount, um, like, or double the amount, right, coming in. So you had pr primarily a lot of sellers stepping in at that level right there. And so you can actually see when you're actually getting a significant Bro, I do. I don't know what's going on with these like these noises for Bookmap today, but I do not like them. They were they were so much better the other day. Those are terrible. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> so you can see like when they're actually getting, and really like when the noise turns on too, it just basically highlights to when you're getting the most buying pressure coming in. <laughs> And then you could actually come in here too and tweak them to see your volume pressure. And so you can do the threshold and so like where it turns green versus where it turns. So you can actually show yourself where it's more interesting or where you're, where you want to get more of them from <laughs> the transpire. Yeah, probably it might be, um, you can turn it into, you can turn that up or down. So it can be like, give you another alert to where it sounds the alarm off for you too, when the threshold is lower. But I mean, I don't know why you want to have a threshold of like five. That would not make any sense. But yeah. <laughs> Todd's live. Go ask him questions. Please don't. Um, Culture Palette. Da, 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 no, AR15. AMD, good buying opportunity. So AMD's earnings, they beat. The problem with their earnings was one outlook, which I always say outlook is the most important thing. I like. Don't really care about much else except outlooks when it comes to an earnings call. Like, I think everything else is, is kind of a waste of your time. Like, if you're focused on the other stuff. Um, but with AMD, like, their earnings beat, they which was a slight beat. Um, but they didn't really talk about any growth in market share. They didn't really talk about um, growth over the next, you know, quarter, which was an issue. Which I'm like, why did they not talk about that, even though they saw growth coming? They mentioned AI, but they didn't mention how AI would help them grow. They just said that's their primary focus right now. I'm just like, what are we talking about? Why are we not like, you know, they didn't really give you anything or get investors excited about anything necessarily. Do I think AMD long-term is still great? I do. I think compared to other names, especially on this dip down like near $80 now, I don't know how you couldn't like it personally. Um, you know, but... Uh, I think it has a lot of potential, personally. If AMD's Ali wasn't the best, can we expect the same thing out of NVIDIA when they report? No, NVIDIA's a much bigger company. Um, also, too, like I said in Discord, um, AMD CEO is a lot more conservative than a lot of CEOs. She's notorious for giving, like, um, she doesn't really give crazy outlandish targets, right? It's like Elon Musk, for instance, who'll come out at an earnings call and say, guys, look, we have this AI, and if the robo taxis pay off, we'll become a, a you know a limitless profiting company. Like, they're never gonna say that, right? Um, so you need to understand, you know, you have to understand the CEO behind it. And that was one thing before we even went into it. I was like, she is conservative, right? That's why when she actually gives you projections or say we're gonna grow, typically you move up immediately. Even on bad earnings, you'll continue to run. Yeah, I know. Ali, Ali yesterday, I don't know what she was making. She was making something. Anyway, she left the air fryer like halfway on the stove, I guess, like on her counter. I don't know why it wasn't on the counter. I have no idea. But anyways, I was making a, I had to make the YouTube video late last night. And 
I guess she left a burner on, on the stove. Like, and, but it's like, a, it's an electric stove. She, she left a burner on and all I heard was like this popping noise. And I look over and like the, oh, I guess, so like the, the, it was still plugged into the wall, which I'm like, Jesus Christ could have burnt the whole building down. Um, but it was like just catching on, like just sparking all the wires under Cause like the plug wire was underneath also too. So it was like stove, plug, air fryer. I was like, Jesus Christ. No idea how she did that, but anyways, the air fryer's gone. Yeah, she's, yeah. Yeah, she's not cooking. I don't, don't know how that happened. Air fryers are literally, like, childproof. Option drop, stop spamming. <laughs> the bot. Night bot. Gonna get you. Good put, dude. I'm telling you, Tesla looks so good. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, this meeting goes well. Tesla's gonna go crazy. Straight crazy. It's terrible. I, it is. I should take it. She just threw it away. Actually, told her I'm not buying. And on top of that, like, because the plastic like melted. Um, because the plastic is like melted, it's like all over the top of our stove. I'm like, Jesus, like this is terrible. So I don't know how, but I have to somehow clean that off. If anyone has any tips, off subject, of course, but. A little bit of a push here. Again, the big level you're watching, like I said earlier when we first started, 41.55 here on ES. That's the the level. You know, we got rejected earlier. Happy to start my pet position at 155. Yeah, I mean, like, if I bought some stock down at, like, 160 when Amazon beat. <laughs> I came back, and Amazon was kind of, like, you know, back in the trenches, but Tesla held up. So I'm still sitting nice there, but nothing crazy. I would have liked to go heavier. I did not, though. Okay, so here you go on Meta. This is just like we said. We literally said it. If you, whenever you asked about Meta, rewind the stream. You you broke above. You're looking for the retest of this level and pushing back up. Really, just retest two thirty seven would be fine. But that's what you're looking for right now, and you're kind of getting it. So interesting. Goo gone. Google goo. I don't know what goo is. No, Google's not gone. I don't know what you're talking about, Cameron. Goo? I don't know. Goo Goo Dolls? Oh, Goo. Goo, 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 Goo. Goo, Goo. Uh, it's, like, it's called Goo Off, right? I think, it's, I think this is it. Goof Off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I've actually used that before. I worked for my dad. <clears throat> okay, yeah, you're actually right. You're right. I'll get her. I'll, I'll tell Ali to put that in her toolkit. Bro, she loves having cleaning products. It's like her favorite thing ever. Um, but yeah, so you're coming back down. You can see buyers trying to establish a wall here, trying to hold you up. Exactly what you're looking for. Rejection off of 165 here on Tessie. Junior Romero, I'm not surprised if everything goes down and Tesla goes up. I've seen Tesla just do his thing while the market goes down. Um, I don't know about all that. Um, I, I think you'll, I, I don't know. I think the market just moves all in the same direction, to be honest. Tesla has done, you know, some crazy moves, though. It has, has done that. So I won't rule it out, but nevertheless. We have, how much song do we have? About 30, it's already been 30 minutes in here. If you guys have questions, make sure you ask. I mean, again, I'll have everything live on the other channel when, you know, FOMC starts. <clears throat> Probably right after the stream, we'll start it up. But yeah, I took a short on the retracement when Tesla hit 165 earlier. You son of a gun. I'll be careful, but do what you gotta do. Made 10% offset my loss on AMD shares. Nice. Nice, nice. You're still pushing, still holding here on US. But again, 41.55 has been a little bit of a line in the sand on the day. 13.22 for, you know, NASDAQ also pretty big level. That's where we're sitting. Trying to see if there's any questions. Nothing coming up though. So we are just chilling.
Well, Molen stock is officially worth seven cents. That is crazy. These meme stocks are crazy, guys. No one's asking anything, but this is crazy. Molen stock. I think. <laughs> oh my god, that is so bad. Oh my gosh. Remember, y'all remember this thing? Remember when everyone was so bullish on this? Oh my god, that is terrible. That is treacherous. Oh, poor guys. <clears throat> really on Tesla, though, you want to see you hold 164 and then get that push through FOMC into 166. That is all you want. That is all you're looking for. So on Discord, do you use standard deviation? Yes, hell, I do not. Do not. Nope. Is there a specific indicator you're asking about, Timmy? Um, on here, but no. When it comes to trading options, no. Yeah, just slow movement. You're, you're, there's, there's no reason to get the break b before anything comes out. There's zero reason. Yeah, ES is like so tough, man. Like ES looks <laughs> just crazy. I mean, just looking at the chart right now, like, you know, if you weren't in a downtrend, it would be awesome. Like if you weren't coming out of a downtrend, like it'd be awesome if you were just continuing up. That would be great because the clear like ascending triangle trying to form. I don't know if you really, yeah, you can't. Like, you can't consider this just too because you're coming out of it. I mean, really, if you're like up here, like 45, 46, it'd be awesome to get that push. But you still look so good. Higher lows being established. The real question, though, is like, in order for you to push down today, in order for you to really get a sell off and be, you know, get aggressive selling coming in, I think you have to have a terrible FOMC day. Like, it has to be god awful. One of the worst days ever. Like, what's going on, David? Like, today has got to be um, a terrible day. Like, there has to be. Extreme fear pushed to everyone in order for you to drop. And I just don't think that that's possible. You have content in Spanish. I do not. We've been working with someone actually, Don, in Discord to maybe get that Spanish content out. Um, I've thought about it, though. I just don't know how big the Spanish crowd would be. I, I Don, Don's asked a lot. He's... Uh, he speaks really good Spanish. Tell the sure you're Guns N' Roses fan. I like all music. I like classic music though a lot. Guns N' Roses are okay. They're okay. They're not like my favorite. Not like terrible. Hi, Chihuahua. <laughs> but yeah, we've thought about doing it. Get Don to start the Spanish channel. It's Cheaterones. It's not Cheaterones. He said Cheaterones. But I mean, you're still holding. I mean, on the daily too. Like, this is another thing. Like on the daily, <laughs> I mean, technically speaking, you're still a bull flag too. It's like, yeah, like you have more reward to the downside right now. But it's just like, dude, that daily bull flag into the 90 of May is kind of tough. <laughs> now, nah, Josue. Me no comprehende. Sorry. Me no comprehende. How much longer we got? Almost 20 minutes. <clears throat> Tesla holding on by a thread. Perfect bounce off of 237, as we said right there. What happens? Look at that. Like literally what we said was going to happen. Perfect. You break above. You retest. You're pushing back up. Exactly what we wanted. Exactly what we were looking for then. 
Tesla's up 12%. Is Tesla up? Wait, no, Tesla's not up 12%. David, what you talking about? Tesla's up 2 I was like, I was like is Tesla up 12% today? I don't think so. <laughs> I was like, you got me fooled. Fooled me. Not today. Oh. Oh, good. Do you remember that one guy that like messaged you? He was like, he was talking about me. He was like, uh, what did he say? He said, Tyler never wants to listen to anybody. Tesla's going to 250. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Tesla did not go to 250. <laughs> Forgot his name. I think it was like a that guy. That was like his name. Good push so far on, on Meta. It has massive volume and swing low place. Interesting. I haven't seen him since. I haven't seen him either, man. That guy's. That guy's wild. It was scary. <clears throat> yes, trying to hold forty-one fifty. Just chilling though. If you're over 4138, you still see upside though to the, for the time being. Say not 1322 on NQ, nothing crazy. What do you expect for today? Hopefully, some volatility. It all depends on what Powell says and Powell's tone towards the pause. If he hints towards a pause, I think you start pushing towards 13.7 on NASDAQ. Tyler, do I know Costa Rica? I do know what Costa Rica is. I know, I know of Costa Rica. Euro USD is up G, the pound too. Well, if your argument is based on the dollar, I'm just going to tell you right now. Theoretically, when the dollar goes down, you enter a risk on, hypothetically. So you start dumping more money into equities commodities have you ever been to Costa Rica I have not I really enjoy Texas and not leaving Texas I like Vegas though a lot too Vegas is really nice I like Vegas second home <clears throat> If you're in a Discord, you have questions, please go ahead and ask. Uh, we'll be here for another like, 20 minutes. Again, there's not an extreme amount of stuff we can cover today. It's just FOMC. You're not going to get a I mean, this whole live stream, we've been within like 10 points on NASDAQ, which is kind of unheard of. But, you know, there's not a lot. I can go over things if you have questions. You know, Meta has had a good move off of 237 since we've begun. Um, but, like, besides that, obviously, there's just not a lot we can really discuss. You know, it, it is what it is. Um, but we'd love to answer questions is Houston the best city in Texas I don't know about that don't know about that Houston is okay hmm
Um, how do you see the accumulation phases on book map? I thought we were going to watch the FMC meeting on live. We are. It's not right now, though. Austin, Texas. I don't love Austin, actually. Austin's okay. I'm not a huge fan of Austin or the people that live in Austin. Um, I thought we were... Da, 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 accumulation. I mean, if you're talking about, like, Wyckoff and, you know, distribution, things like that, I mean, you're looking at higher time frames. I wouldn't really be looking at higher... You can't really look at higher time frames on Bookmap. It's more for seeing intraday price action levels that are being established, buyers, sellers, etc. Right, so when we mounted above 237, you pushed above, you broke through that resistance. Buyers stepped in right here, created a wall right here, you bounced, you pushed up. Like the easiest description of what we're looking for. Um, there been a, no, I have not. How can we get into Discord? I'm looking to learn optimized use of the software. Um, so this is not my software. This is Bookmaps. Um, you can check it on their website if you use my on uh, my. YouTube channel, Option Drops, uh, which I'll be live there later. I'll post the link on Twitter so everyone can hop in. Um, but if you use the link on there, you'll get, I think, 25% off. Um, but yeah, they do have an awesome Discord. Uh, Bookmap does have a solid Discord where they're constantly basically doing support and stuff on the, along those lines. Um, is big volume entering now? No. Big volume is probably already entered. If you look at yesterday's video, it was a better representation of buyers stepping into the market. Meta keeps pushing them. Meta looks good. Yeah, Meta was that was a buy on that dip. I mean, media bounced back two thirty nine. Can you drop a link to their Discord? Um, I right. I don't know if this is gonna work. We'll see. That is the book map Discord. It is not. The book map software is not free though, just to let you know. Actually, the Discord link is down below as well. well. You can see the Discord link down below. So, yeah. Size of the dots are relative, um, just to let you know. They're relative to each other, it's happening. Um, if you want to understand volume, you know, people coming into the market, I mean, just go look at volume on the day as well. Again, it's really easy. Easiest way to do it if you don't have a broker or anything like that. Just go to Yahoo Finance, go to SPY, historical data. You're at 28 million volume on the day going into one o'clock. So two, two hours left in the day, basically, and you're at 30 million. Yesterday, you had 100 million. So like food for thought and how little volume is actually in the market right now. People waiting. Big money is not in coming into the market right now. You'll get a lot of volume though after FOC. A bulk of it. Austin, Houston, San Antonio, Dallas. I actually like Dallas. The Dallas is nice. I liked it a lot. I would not ever want to be in San Antonio. I don't like Austin. Austin's like okay. Areas around Austin are better though, like the outskirts of Austin. I'm a big fan of those. Um, yeah, like, but not specifically Austin. Like Austin, the people are terrible. Price, everything's you know way inflated in prices. Um, yeah, but you go to, like to the outside of Austin, it's really nice. So that's worth mentioning. Like I mean, like Sixth Street is cool, I guess. You know. Rainy Street, there's, there's cool stuff in Austin, but I don't really think it's that awesome. Yeah. The people, though, are just like, I'm telling you, the people in Austin are just the worst. Like, I, I am not a fan of it. I am not a fan at all. We have about 13 more minutes left in this live stream. If you have questions, make sure you ask them. Yeah, the homeless have taken over. Dude, yeah, a lot of homeless people there, too. That's a great thing to say. Actually, a great point. There's homeless people in every city, though, so. It's like Houston, 100% homeless people, but yeah. Houston's just huge. Like, you don't understand. Houston's massive. Like, it's a massive, massive city. Um, 
NASDAQ, a little bit of selling, nothing crazy. But again, you're like, guys, like giving you a visual since 12 o'clock, we started at, you know, 13.23, we're at 13.216, like a $7 fluctuation. How can I detect resistance zones and book map? Um, you got to find them yourself. No, it doesn't do them for you. Um, you just have to see where, you know, the buyers and sellers are at based on liquidity on whatever stock equity futures you're looking at. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I don't really know your question, David. What do you mean? I don't know if you meant something else, but yeah, like, I don't, like, I don't know if you're talking about like where liquidity levels are, where, or yeah. Also, a lot of educational stuff on my YouTube, a lot of educational stuff on Jay's YouTube, a lot of educational stuff on Bookmap's YouTube as well to better help you understand all of it. Um, so if you have questions, I mean, they're all there. It's free. All, it's all free education as well. Netflix looking tough to the downside. Tesla 164. All right. That is not, that is not an answer to what I asked. You did not say anything. Um, NVIDIA, NVIDIA still looks really good. NVIDIA, like again, like AMD, you dipped, sucks, bad, tragic. NVIDIA is holding its own. NVIDIA looks tough. I, I think with good, good FOMC as well, I think NVIDIA easily can run. I think all these names look really good still. NVIDIA is at a pretty big level. 290 is a, is a monster, monster level though. We have to understand that though, I will say. It's a scary level where it's at. If you have more questions, make sure you ask them while we're here. We're going to be hopping out pretty soon. And then we'll head over to, to the main channel to start the live for the Fed decision and stuff. <clears throat> I started the live stream a little bit early too, so we'll probably head around like three minutes early so we can have it all set up. <clears throat> Super quiet day from you guys. Abnormally quiet. If the Fed meeting goes well, obviously, just let you guys know in Discord. Um, level you're watching, you can't even see it right now, to be honest. It's going to be 4,200 here on, on ES. Goes bad. If you get below 4,100, that's going to be the, the line in the sand. Um, in between, you're not super, super interested. Are you going to be day trading spy today? Nope. No, sir. Hmm. About five more minutes, guys. So if you have your questions, make sure you ask them. Super, super quiet day. Tesla blow them. It's at 164. Meta turning down a little bit. NVIDIA, really interesting chart here as well. I'm going to tell you right now. Um, going into NVIDIA, this is like a third test of 280 today. I think NVIDIA, dude, I'm going to tell you right now, NVIDIA looks fantastic. Like, you tested it in pre-market, you ran it open as well, you dipped down, came back up, tested it, came back down, hitting it again. NVIDIA looks stout. It looks tough, like 100%. Do you think about oil and gas getting wrecked? Um... More interested in like names like Exxon. I would like those names to be honest. Like uh, I, I like Exxon. I like Exxon. Where's that down here? To be honest, the one where's the daily two hundred SMA? You still got a little bit of ways down though. The two hundred five, one hundred six. The two hundred. I think it's a buy probably. Most likely, you filled the gap though as well there. When you consider opening a call option position, are you on spy? Or are you just waiting for confirmation? Typically, I have a plan though, like a, a target, key level, or above, etc. Could you see Microsoft and Apple? Um, they're both really strong. Apple has earnings tomorrow, so I'd be really careful on Apple. Not least, I'd like to trade. 
Microsoft looks really good though, above 305. It's very strong above 305. Yeah. <clears throat> Apple, I'm, I mean, you're just not gonna make any money on options on Apple. I mean, you can make a little bit, but yeah, the earnings tomorrow are gonna be pretty big. And Microsoft, 305 is huge. But Apple, like, you're getting above 170, which is crazy, and 171 possibly. So you're back in the range of possibly pushing to, you know, all-time highs, which is crazy to say. I like, think you're already back at those levels. Sorry, the camera just messed up, <clears throat> but we're almost done out here. We have five minutes left. We'll know like two minutes. <clears throat> so again, if you have those questions, make sure you ask them. We're about to hop out of here. Would love to answer any questions before we start and we go live on the other channel. Again, guys, totally up to you. Take advantage of this time that you have here. Um, but yeah, are you streaming FOMC on my main channel? Yes, I am. Option drops. Yes, I will be streaming FOMC. I'll be starting like literally right after this one. Be going right right over to there. <clears throat> I'll have the Fed statement pulled up like immediately. <laughs> what plays are you looking at today? Depends. Guy, I can't look at a play until we get FOMC. Can't look at anything. But Tesla looks really good over 166. Um AMD is interesting where it's at at eighty dollars. Like Netflix as well, if it gets above three thirty one. Um, I think Meta is still very strong. Um, yeah, only big caps. I wouldn't be interested in anything, anything like any mids or anything like that. But primarily Tesla over one sixty six is the most interesting thing out there right now. Hands down, hands down. <clears throat> so I was getting news two coming out, but man, my cough is just acting up today. Man, it sucks. <clears throat> no questions, nothing at all. Well, all right, guys, we're going to hop off. We're going to get everything set up for FOMC. Uh, we'll be back next Wednesday. Obviously, obviously you, just can't get, you just can't get good stuff happening here. Like, I mean, honestly, like, like I said at the beginning of the stream, you were going to trend sideways. You've moved in, in an eight-point range over the past hour. It is what it is. A lot of volatility coming, though, here in the next hour, so... Prepare. Be safe with your trading, guys. Do not, do not, I, I, do not overextend, at least until you know Fed starts talking. So, my opinion. Have a good one, guys.